I'm Alex Michelson on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles, and this week the issue is homelessness. We have to really all work together in order to make this go away. We talk with former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Ben Carson, the mayor of one city where homelessness is dropping, plus some of California's top lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. A special edition of The Issue Is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, California's only statewide political show. You're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. We are on Skid Row in downtown LA where there's some 5,000 residents. Everywhere you look out here are tents and there's similar scenes all throughout the state of California. This problem, this issue, homelessness, is getting worse. More than 150,000 Californians are currently homeless. That's up 17% since 2018. The United Nations compared San Francisco's tent cities to the slums of New Delhi. If these Democrat liberal politicians don't straighten out, the federal government will have to come in. We're not gonna lose cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and others that are great cities. California Governor Gavin Newsom promising $1.4 billion in new spending to fight homelessness. This is a crisis. Uh, this is unacceptable. Everybody has the right to be angry and concerned. Cities like Los Angeles are housing more people. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. There's no question L.A. now has the model. Uh, in fact, in Washington, D.C., at a recent conference, they said, we're the model for how you deal with homelessness. We've gone from 9,000 to 21,000 people housed a year. But the housing count shows the number of homeless increasing almost everywhere in California. We're the 12 homeless count show that we're up. So how is the LA the model if well, the homeless count is going right, up? Because I, I had the same feeling. To say that LA is the model for dealing with homelessness is to say that Krispy Kreme is the model for dealing with obesity. A big part of the problem, lack of affordable housing for millions. That's just not that Another cause, drug addiction and untreated mental health issues with meth use skyrocketing. Big on drugs, pretty much. Some blaming California's Prop 47, which decriminalized drug use from a felony to a misdemeanor. The fact is 47 is murder. It is murder. If you don't create consequences for drug addicts, they will use until they die. This issue often transcending politics, like this moment with conservative John Cobalt and liberal Hassan Piker on the issue is. It's emergency time. It's pretend this is a hurricane, a tornado, an earthquake. You send in the federal government, FEMA, every possible agency that has jurisdiction and money. I agree with everything you <laughs> just said. Former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger hoping to create space for compromise this week. His Schwarzenegger Institute at USC hosting a summit, bringing together some of the state's most powerful people looking for solutions. Afterwards, the governor speaking exclusively with us. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, welcome back to The Issue Is. Good to see you and thank you for having us here at USC. Well, great to have you here, and uh, you know it is very important always to invite the media, yeah, because uh, we got to get the message out there, and we got to let people know, you know, what a crisis this is, and we have to really all work together in order to make this go away. Yeah, well, we have matching beards going, <clears throat> so I'm trying to look more like you. I think yours <laughs> looks a little bit more groomed than mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, this is this is sort of the defining uh, issue for right now. Um, you've talked about the fact that when you go to Gold's Gym in Venice. You see it on your drive. When you see the tents and you see how much worse the situation has gotten, what goes through your mind? Well, uh, there's a lot of things that goes through my mind. The first thing that goes into my mind is that I feel sorry for these people that they are in that situation, that they have to live on the street in a tent. And then also what goes through my mind is in the, in the morning at 6.30, when I drive to through Venice to Gorge Gym, I'm freezing my butt off. <laughs> I have to put a down jacket on in the winter now right. because it gets that cold, it goes down into the 40s. Mm -hmm. And here these people are sleeping outside on the sidewalk in that cold, freezing weather. I mean, it breaks my heart to see that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, what goes through my mind is, is, you know, typical politicians, they can't get their act together. Because, I mean, this is not something that is like a pandemic or something like that that happens from one day to the next where you have a crisis in your hands. I mean, this is something that has developed over the years 
It's not from one day to the next. And I think that they should have started doing something about it as the crisis started developing. Now they're all seeing that it's an emergency now. It's a real cri a problem has become a crisis and they still haven't really done. Now they start getting into it. Now they start making suggestions about what the state can do and what the federal government can do and what the locals can do. I mean, hello, we all know for in the history of America that the only way you get really big things done is if the state and the federal and the local governments all work together and the private sector and the nonprofit and the academic sector and everyone works together. The day they started talking about this as if this is like a new idea. But they're not working together. You've got the governor of California, uh, Gavin Newsom, fighting with President Trump on Twitter on the issue of homelessness. Newsom says he needs more HUD grants. The secretary Carson told me we're, he's not going to give more HUD grants. I mean, how does that happen? How do you bring both sides together? Well, you know, it, it, it's always uh, the federal government always looks at, the, you know, what is best for them and as if they're not kind of like in the same country almost, you know, right. and the state looks for it, what is best for the state government. So there's always friction. And I think the key thing is, is not to go and to say, well, I hate the Trump administration, and therefore I don't want to work with them. No, you have to think the opposite. You have to go and say, look, we need the federal government. I may not believe in all the things that they're doing, but we need their dollars because we are putting a lot of money into the federal, you know, into our uh, yeah, uh, tax dollars in the federal budget. So th we should get some money back. You have this unique ability to bring people together. That's what we're seeing on display here. That's sort of the premise of the Schwarzenegger Institute to begin with. Right. Having now brought all these sites together to talk about homelessness, what's the most important thing that you've learned? What's been your big takeaway from this experience? Well, I, I knew from the beginning that it is a very complicated issue I said this in my speech, but the bottom line is, is one of the speakers said that this crisis happened because we started passing laws in the 80s that had to do with the no growth movement. Mm -hmm. Not in my backyard. I don't want any more growth. I don't think we can really do this because we don't have the, the streets. Uh, there will be too much traffic. There will be too much this and that. And so there was the no growth movement. But that didn't mean that people stopped moving to California. It increased from that time from 25 million to 40 million. And that means now they are here. And now what has, has happened is we haven't built enough homes. We could have had 500,000 more apartments in Los Angeles if we wouldn't have passed this no growth movement. And therefore he said, what we have done, the damage that we have done, we can also the same way undo. And I think that is where the key is, to undo that, but this is a long-term goal, mm -hmm. to undo that and to make again housing affordable in Los Angeles and affordable in California. But the bottom line is, is what I wanted to accomplish here today with the Schwarzenegger Institute is, is bring everyone together Democrats, Republicans, young and old, minorities and the whites and everybody should come together and talk about this issue and start getting together and start working together because this is no different than being on a soccer team or on a basketball team. If everyone on the team plays together, you can win. If you go off into different directions and only think about yourself, it won't happen. Governor Schwarzenegger, thank you for the time. Thank you for Absolutely. inviting us to be a part of it. And up next here on The Issue is, we're going to hear from some of those perspectives. Among them, the Secretary of Housing, Ben Carson, the Mayor of San Diego, Kevin Faulkner, plus some of the top leaders in the state of California on the Democratic side. Stay with us. A packed edition of The Issue is. The biggest thing the United States government can do today, the next president, what President Trump can do tomorrow, through executive order, is increase the fair market rents, the value of these vouchers, and we can get thousands and thousands of people in Los Angeles off the street in weeks, not years, not even months. Governor Gavin Newsom on the issue is saying that the state needs more affordable housing vouchers from the federal government. Well, the person in charge of that is the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Ben Carson. He's been on a bus tour of California this week. We caught up with him moments after his speech at the Schwarzenegger Institute. Homelessness, obviously a huge crisis in California. Right. What do you think is the federal government's responsibility for solving it, and what more can the federal government do? Well, obviously, you know, we've put together the, the president through an executive order, the uh, White House Council on uh, Eliminating Barriers to Affordable Housing, which means we can look at the federal statutes that cause the problem, but we can also help remove some of the barriers. But most importantly, 
we can do what we're doing right now, and that's talking to all the various local jurisdictions and getting them to look at the regulatory barriers. Yeah. Because as I mentioned in there, you know, when it comes to multifamily dwellings, up to 42% of the cost are these regulatory barriers. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, they're not put there by bad people. It's just that people keep layering one thing over another and it becomes very complex and it increases the time. Time is money. When I talked to Governor Newsom about this, he said the biggest thing the federal government can do is more HUD vouchers. He said that could be done tomorrow and it would help solve homelessness in a big way in California. What, what do you say to that? I would say, you know, there are two approaches. One approach is you can keep chasing the escalating prices with more and more money. Mm -hmm. You'll never get there. The other is to look at the cause for the escalating prices and to deal with that. And you know, we want to look at the cause and we want to deal with that. And then if after you do that, you need more money, absolutely. But to do it the other way around is never going to lead you to the right place. So essentially, it sounds like you're saying no more HUD vouchers, at least not for, not for now. Well, let's use the ones that we have and let's use them efficiently. Yeah. But let's, let's bring the prices into alignment with common sense so that we can make those vouchers actually valuable again. Uh, you're on a bus tour now. You're about to get on the bus again. Uh, what's the most important thing you have learned from the bus tour, from being out there and seeing this with your own eyes, and how can that help people in, in California going forward? Well, I've learned that there are a lot of people on both sides of the political spectrum who want to solve this problem. And, you know, there has to be the willingness to work together to get it done. I think that willingness is developing. I'm actually quite encouraged. You know, we have to obviously begin to recognize what the problems are and be willing to talk about them together in order to solve them. And, and, and we have to put the people who are impacted as the focus. And, and lastly, I know you, you met recently with Mayor Garcetti in Washington, D.C. about potential solutions for here. What was some of that conversation and, and what could come of that? Well, I don't want to reveal all of it, but I, I will say that we are working on a systematic plan and you will see some real results. All right, we can't wait to see it. Secretary, thank you for the time. Right, Appreciate it. Thank you. Our thanks to Secretary Carson. Up next, San Diego is the only major county where homelessness has gone down. Why is that? We talked with the mayor of San Diego about their very different approach. Stay with us. We have to speak the truth about what causes homelessness, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Joining us now is the mayor of San Diego, Kevin Faulkner. San Diego is the only major county in California where homelessness has gone down. Uh, mayor Faulkner, welcome awesome. to The Issue Is. Thanks for having me. Thank Good you so much, Thank appreciate you. the time. So San Diego, the only place in the, the state of California where homelessness has gone down, why is that? Well, I, we're taking decisive action, and I've really tried to set the tone of throwing out all of the excuses that used to uh, you know, permeate this discussion years ago, um, and let's get people off the street now. And so whether it's the bridge shelters that we've established uh, that I think are working, the storage centers, the assessment centers, the work we're doing on neighborhood policing, we have one goal, get people off the street uh, and get them transitioned into a, a house or an apartment of their own. Um, I do not allow uh, tents, on San Diego sidewalks. That's unsafe, unclean, unsanitary. It's not helping the individuals that are out there. That's why we're moving so aggressively on the bridge shelters. And I think that's why they're having a very positive effect. I mean, legally, how do you do that? Well, all of the, all of the work that we do, again, we've, we've had a massive change and a massive investment in to set up these bridge shelters. Um, because the flip of that is to say, you know, to have somebody uh, living on the street, if you allow that, they're gonna die on the street. Uh, and so that's why it's so important that we have a safe, clean, sanitary place to go that gives them the help, the supported services, uh, really pushes on a lot of the other issues that get them transitioned into supportive housing. Um, and to have that, that approach that says, you need to be indoors, not outside. So you, you drive around Los Angeles, you drive around San Francisco, everywhere you look are tents. 
right? Uh, how do you not have that? I mean, how do you actually enforce that? How do you go about doing that? We, we have a very, um, you know, it's, it's really a combination of factors, but I believe so strongly in this um, that we, you know, created a new division within our San Diego Police Department, Neighborhood Policing, that, that actively works with, with folks on the street. And when they encounter folks, their first thing is always, can I get you to a shelter bed tonight? Now you have to have the beds available to be able to do this. And that's why we push so strongly on siding the bridge shelters, uh, getting the beds that we need. Um, I picked all of the sites and the locations myself and for the shelters. And I said to the community, it's going to be cleaner, it's going to be safer when these bridge shelters are up uh, than before they were up. Um, so it's working. Look, we still have a lot of work to do in San Diego. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons that that bias towards action, um, keep it in mind that these are real people and to, to condone somebody to living on the street oftentimes is to condone them to die on the street. So often we will talk to people on the street who say that they don't want to go into shelters. What do you say to that person? I think that is a, that is a big uh, issue that all of us are grappling with, not just in San Diego, but every city uh, up and down California. Uh, I think we have to move to a system that says, if we are going to provide the shelter bed, you have to use it. I think that's common sense. Um, what I talked about a little bit today, um, really is in terms of common sense, is also changing uh, some of the laws that are misguided, uh, particularly around substance abuse and Prop 47, um, that is leading to a heroin and methamphetamine epidemic among the homeless population. We have to change that. We have to ensure that we have, a, have laws that actually compel people to get to treatment, not a jail bed, but to make that change. Prop 47 is not working in California. It needs to be changed. The, the advocates of Prop 47 say the alternative of that is going to a jail cell and that isn't working either. Well, the alternative that we have to change and again fix is to compel treatment. Without consequences for that, it's not going to work. That's why it hasn't, hasn't worked because the dollars for, for treatment on these substance abuse have not flown, to this, have not flown <laughs> down to cities. Um, so what you're saying I think makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. You're now about to leave office. There's some, been some talk about Kevin Fox would be a great governor of California. What do you, what do you think about that? I'm, 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 I'm focused on finishing strong. I have a, I have a year left um, uh, as mayor of San Diego and really trying to cement a lot of these policies that I think are working. But I also feel strongly, as we, met, as we talked about earlier, um, we need to change state laws. So I'm going to be working on a, a ballot measure to take directly to voters. I think take some examples of what we've been able to do uh, in San Diego, successfully on shelters or others, gets to some of these issues on substance abuse, and put it right before California voters. I think this is not a Democrat-Republican issue. This is what is the right thing that we should be doing for California issue. Uh, and when we focus on that, I think we can actually make change on a statewide level. So I'm I'm very uh, anxious and eager to push this agenda forward in the next several years. But could we see you running against Governor Newsom with that agenda and bring it to the rest of the state? Well, I'm, I am going to be bringing this agenda to the state. I think the ballot measure is going to really focus this in terms that uh, I think Californians want to see. Mm -hmm. They recognize what's happening on the streets right now is not working. Um, and this is, this is not just an issue in California. It is the issue. It is the issue. Mayor Kevin Faulkner, thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, some different views from some of the state's leading Democratic lawmakers. Stay with us. You're watching The Issue Us. It's the, the number one issue um, for so many uh, voters out there. This week, I was honored to moderate a panel at the USC Schwarzenegger Institute on solutions to homelessness. With us, Daryl Steinberg, mayor of Sacramento and co-chair of the governor's task force on homelessness. Catherine Barger, chair of the LA County Board of Supervisors. Robert Garcia, the mayor of Long Beach. And State Senator Holly Mitchell, chair of the Budget Committee. How did this happen? Why is this happening? And what's the biggest challenge for fixing it? You know, this didn't happen overnight. This, I'm call, I would consider this a slow boil. And every level of government and every past administration has taken their turn at turning up the heat. But if we are leaving people in poverty, and in fact passing policies that exacerbate the number of people who are falling deeper into poverty, then we helped to create the uh, human condition we all experience today. There are Democratic supermajorities in both houses. You got a Democratic governor. Have the Democratic policies not been working? 
as I said, every past administration at every level of government has taken their turn to turn up the heat. Why isn't the problem getting better? The bigger issue is also just a production issue, and the state has lagged so dramatically in housing production. The voices that are against production are the loudest by far. Steinberg wants a statewide mandate forcing local communities to act. We are tacitly saying that this isn't important enough to make it a mandate and to drive the change. And I think it's far past time we change the law. We discuss the drug use and mental health crisis on the streets and potential changes to a state law called LPS, which allows those suffering from mental health issues to refuse treatment. It should never be considered a civil right for people to live in squalor on the streets. Right. And it's not about institutionalizing, it's about stabilizing and then providing them the support. I talk to law enforcement who, if you talk to the first responders, they could write a book on every single homeless person on the street right now because they come in contact with them, if not daily, at least weekly. Another topic, Prop 47, which decriminalized drug use from a felony to a misdemeanor. I do believe that Prop 47 has exacerbated the situation. We are enabling a population to use on the street, and um, I, I, think, I, I think we have a moral obligation. Do you think that uh, it should be repealed? I mean, do you think it's a good I thing? I do not think it should be repealed. We should build facilities and programs to help people meet their needs. While we didn't keep up with building housing or we didn't keep up with building mental health facilities for people, we did a great job as a state in terms of building prisons and jails. I think the failure of Prop 47 was was not the, the, the law itself, but it was our inability to assist people coming out of the system and get them into job training, uh, get them into health care, and get them, get them the services that, that they needed. Despite some disagreements, everybody here agreed on the need to come together to fix this. But thank you, Governor Schwarzenegger, for making this happen. I think it's extraordinary that you use your platform and your, your star power to bring people together um, and to talk about what is one of the most important issues of our time, and we appreciate bringing various perspectives together. Thank you all for uh, sharing your views and making time to talk about this today, and thank you all for listening. Thank you very much. Our thanks to all the panelists and our thanks to the Schwarzenegger Institute for partnering with us this week. Clearly, this issue of homelessness is our most vexing problem in the state of California, and we are committed to continuing to cover it as we try to explore solutions. I'm Alex Michelson, reporting from Skid Row. We'll see you next time on The Issuance.